This past week, Perseverance added the seventh core sample to a collection that will be returned to labs on Earth. But getting it home requires a Mars ascent vehicle, a rocket, which now comes with a bizarre twist on this episode of Mars Guy. The three-mission campaign to return samples of Mars to Earth for the first time ever is getting more real. The Perseverance rover mission, the first in the campaign, is designed to carefully select and core dozens of rock samples and store them in airtight tubes. Some tubes will be placed in caches, little collections at the surface, to be picked up by a fetch rover and delivered to the MAV. Both will be carried on the second mission of the campaign, currently planned to launch no earlier than 2026. Other tubes stored in Perseverance could be delivered to the MAV if it's still working after the MAV arrives. The 3 meter long, two-stage solid rocket motor MAV is sized to deliver the samples to orbit around Mars for the Earth return orbiter to pick up and take home. Yes, sample takeout from Mars. A bigger MAV that could deliver samples directly to Earth would be too big for the available entry, descent, and landing systems. We've been launching rockets to Mars for decades, but there's never been a rocket launched from Mars, except in Hollywood movies. In The Martian, the rocket is referred to as a Mars Ascent Vehicle, a MAV borrowed from decades-old Mars mission planning reports. Mark Watney had to strip out all the excess weight in his MAV to reach a higher orbit than it was designed for, which made for a crazy launch sequence. Now engineers at the Jet Propulsion Lab, the real one, not the Hollywood one, have come up with a concept that seems a bit crazy in its own way, but it's a response to concerns that the lander can't be heavy and stable enough to serve as a launch platform. So better to toss the MAV several meters up give it a little tilt, and ignite the engine. It's called a cold launch, and it's a pretty standard way to launch missiles. So this seems to be a good swords-to-plowshares situation. Meanwhile, back on Mars, Perseverance abraded another rock to expose a fresh surface for close-up inspection. Here's a rock hammer for scale. Then it used its coring bit to extract a sample. That operation vibrated loose the tailings that had been blown out of the abraded spot. The view of the sample in the drill bit showed that the bottommost portion had fractured. Then following the technique used to settle it in the bit, a portion was still stuck at the tip. The automated process continued with the tube being delivered inside the rover and viewed in incremental steps by the cache cam. This showed no piece stuck at the top of the tube, Instead, it showed the other portion, which had fallen into the tube, so the piece that had gotten stuck must have fallen out during the operation that delivered the tube on board. Based on the depth of the sample material in the tube, it's still a good sized sample. A second sample is in the process of being collected, and once that's complete, the plan is to drive without interruption to the delta, as presented in the previous episode. The delta will be the site of the next sample and the search for evidence of possible microbial life. 